Hello, and welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, joined as always by Viv Hudson. Viv, we have an exciting interview today. We do, we do. I wonder who that could be with. Oh, it's you. Well, <laughs> it's with yours truly. Right. And we were just we were discussing a topic that's come up recently from the field. I know a lot of people are pushing some of these these new hot programs like osteoarthritis and, and regenerative medicine and some of these other real exciting things that are on the market. But of course, finding a way to get the word out to doctors can some sometimes be difficult. And so we were talking about some out of the box ideas that some people have done, myself included, that have worked very well to get in front of a much wider audience for those of you who are comfortable presenting in front of a, a big audience. Yes, yes. So that's always the challenge is, yes, you've got to get out of your own way <laughs> to do those things, but to create something that people want to come to. So I know that you've had a bit of experience around that in the past. So tell us a story about one time where you actually managed to get a group of doctors together with that out-of-the-box idea. Well, I have a couple of them, Viv, and you're going to find a theme here. They both involve alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's one way to get but, people to come and and then they spend more money too right <laughs> <laughs> well unfortunately that is the drawback but in both of my i have a couple examples that i'll share which hopefully will be um helpful to some people who listen to this who are trying to think of some ways that they could attack these offices from a different perspective so the first story was I had, and as you know, I mentioned many times, I started in this business as a drug rep for Merck. And getting FaceTime with your providers, especially your top prescribers, that's always looked upon favorably by your higher ups. That's really what they want. If you can get five minutes a week in with your top prescribers, you're doing pretty good. So uh, in, in one of the circumstances, I had a large group where they had multiple locations and just really could get nowhere with these doctors, to be quite honest. The, the, one of these situations where they basically shut you out, um, no access or very, very minimal access at best. And I tried everything. I tried um, piggybacking on some other people's relationships, some other more senior reps who are maybe selling a different one of our product lines and just trying to get an angle in. And pretty much the universal answer was, well, if you go with this with this group, they're pretty tough nut to crack. Well, I went to the main corporate office once, and this is when I was too young and dumb to know any better that, oh, no, you don't go to the corporate office. But I went to the corporate office and I've, I ended up talking to a girl who was and an administrator, like basically the the uh, practice administrator for the whole practice. And she had just started on the job and I introduced myself and I told her about some of the troubles that we've had. I, I tried to give her my perspective as as being a sales rep and some of the value that we create. And I said, you know, it would be great is that there's just some way that I could address everybody all at once. Well, collectively, we came up with the idea. She said, well, you know, Everybody comes to the office here on Thursday, the first Thursday of the month. They come here at the end of the day and we do an all physician meeting. So you're talking about 40 now, oh God, more than that, probably close to 60 uh, physicians and mid levels that we're going to be at this meeting. So I said, perfect. Here's what we'll do. We'll do. We'll sponsor a happy hour at the practice at the main corporate headquarters. And they had a big foyer. And uh, I went to like a high-end grocery store, had them make up like a charcuterie board, bought a bunch of wine and beer and said, we're going to do a meet and greet happy hour after their meeting. So while they were in their big boardroom having their meeting, my boss came in. I had uh, some of the other salespeople came with me, but I set the whole thing up and we set, set up this uh, spread. Well, wouldn't you know it? They all spill out of their meeting and pretty much everybody came to, came to the happy hour. And we ended up having some great one-on-one -on -one discussions with a lot of the doctors. They were softened up. They were much more likely to talk to me. They didn't have patients that they were dealing with. They didn't have to be in the next exam room, et cetera. Plus, as you know, al alcohol is a pretty good social lubricant. So it worked out pretty good in that situation. Now, the other situation was, was pretty similar, and this is something I'm only given these ideas because it, where that one may not work for ancillary services, um, 
you know, some of these things would work pretty well if you are pushing one of these programs where uh, to independent physicians. So the the other situation that I had that I got a lot of kudos for when I was a drug rep was we had a, a guy, Dr. Gerges. Dr. Gerges was the top of the heap, number one prescriber. But again, uh, he's the top prescriber, which means he has very little time for for sales reps. Well, I happened to notice once when I was in their office, I saw Dr. Gerges had Ohio University associate professor, a uh, little thing on his wall. And I made a note of that. I go, you know, there's a lot of doctors around here who had also gone to Ohio University Medical School. So I just had this crazy idea. And I got in to see Dr. Gerges once. And I said, Dr. Gerges, I've talked to a because he he would ask me sometimes, Say, hey, how's uh, how's Jenny doing? Uh, is she happy over at that practice? Tell her I said hi. That was usually the conversation. And these are all former students of his. So I had this idea. I said, Dr. Gerges, I see a lot of people with Ohio University um, medical school degrees on their wall. How would you like it if I got all of them together and we had a little reunion for you? Would you be open to that? He said, yeah, Absolutely. So a local winery was doing a clam bake, which is, you know, an East Coast thing and in the fall. So I thought, you know, they're selling tickets to this clam bake so I can kind of control my pricing there, uh, not spend my entire budget. So it was about 40 bucks a head or something like that. And I found a list of all the doctors who had graduated from Ohio University in the last 10 years who were in my call deck. And I went around to each of those doctors. I brought in an invitation and I said, you know, on October 13th, we um, are having a reunion with Dr. Gerges. And they all love Dr. Gerges. I had just about everybody show up to this, Viv. Everybody, including my boss got wind of it. My boss showed up and my boss's boss, the region vice president of the company, flew in specifically. Holy crap, you got Dr. Gerges and a bunch of other providers to sit down and give us their undivided attention. And so we had the event. We show everybody showed up at the event. It was a little meet and greet. And we had some picnic tables in the back that were just for us. And I got up in front of everyone. I said, I said, you know, thank you all for attending. If I could just get your uh, steal five minutes of your time, I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the evening and, and get a chance to catch up. They were all nice as could be super attentive. And we had a nice dialogue back and forth. And they asked a couple questions. And my region vice president got to step in and stand next to me and say, well, let me address that and make him look like the big shot. And all the way around, it was just a huge rousing success. And then that paid dividends down the road because it, it, a lot of these doctors, I knew them on a different level now. I saw them out of their lab coats. I saw them in, you know, in their chinos and Hawaiian shirts and, and flip flops. <laughs> And, uh, you know, half in the bag <laughs> from from having a bottle and a half of wine. And you start to form <laughs> a little bit different relationship with them. And it was just a little bit different with a lot of these providers as I went in. And I ended up getting, of course, good face time with Dr. Gerges and look good in his eyes. But all these other doctors who were just starting out, younger doctors, I ended up getting much tighter relationships with them than I otherwise would have gotten. And I think that that's the key, isn't it? It's You might not get the sale on the night, but if you can certainly strengthen those relationships and make it easier to have a conversation or get a few minutes of their time, then that's going to pay dividends in for years to come potentially. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm wondering if you show up at the end of the day with a six pack with one or two doctors, would that work? <laughs> <laughs> that may work depending on the provider, but it is also the other reason it worked is because I had them out of their environment. They're yes. not they're not having like a nurse tugging them. Doctor, can you sign this prescription pad? Doc, you got, uh, you know, Susie waiting over in exam room number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get that. Here's your test results from the blood work. OK, let me you know how it is when you're talking to them. They they're usually have three, four things going on in their mind. But this gives you an opportunity to get them in a different sort of environment and they're they're softened up. So, Viv, where I, I'll put a final point on this. If I were sitting in a rep's shoes, which I am a rep, what am I saying? I'm, I'm no, no different from anybody else. One of the things that would be very effective that I see is you have, and I hate to just dwell on the osteoarthritis program, but let's face it, that is the hottest program going right now. We've got lots of sales in and, and a lot more coming. Doctors are responding very well to that. 
they're responding because there's a lot of money in it. So if I'm a rep in an area where I'm having difficulty connecting with these doctors, put a date on the map and organize something. Say, you know what I'm going to do? And one of the catchphrases I'm using is, you give us seven minutes, we'll show you seven figures. Because every doctor doing that program is, is making seven figures. So we're going to be doing a seven-minute presentation. The rest of the night is yours. And organize like a happy hour, something like that. So you don't have to pick up the full price of a dinner. That could get pretty expensive. But if you're just talking like a two-hour happy hour uh, and you can get some good prices from a restaurant, if you call them up ahead, say, hey, look, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Can you, can you give me a menu or something? You can usually keep your price relatively low. And you go around to every provider that you can in the area. You say, I want to, and you make up an invite. I have a very special invite. I want to give this to the doctor. And um, you get it to every provider that you can possibly get it to. And you offer for them and a guest. We prefer if you bring your office manager or business manager or someone like that. But we are going to show you how to make seven figures in seven minutes. And if you can get a decent amount of people to attend, even if you don't feel comfortable making the presentation, just even making that step, we have plenty of resources. I know you and I, Viv, we traveled around the country. We have other uh, people who can travel and meet you. If you set something like that up, it's like that, uh, Viv, I know you're Australian, so you're probably not familiar with the Kevin Costner movie, uh, Field of Dreams. No, If I you build it. it mm-hmm. Okay. They'll, that was they'll the whole come. thing. If you, build, if it. you <laughs> build it, they will come. If you, if you book an event where you say, Dang, Mike, I got 10 doctors coming to a happy hour or coming to a breakfast, lunch and learn or coming to whatever. I got 10 doctors coming, Mike, but I don't know how feel how good I feel about pitching this osteoarthritis program or pitching these, you know, these new stem cell products or whatever it is. That's the easiest problem in the world. We'll get somebody there, myself, Viv, somebody else. We'll be there. Um, you just put it together. So. Anyway, Viv, I've gone way over. I'm sick of hearing myself talk. I'm sure everyone else is probably <laughs> tuned out by now. Huh? And uh, so just giving you guys some practical advice. That's what we try to do on this podcast is, is bring you new programs, but give you some practical advice to be successful in the field. And I'm telling you, oh, there was somebody who did this in um, Atlanta who supposedly closed three deals off one of these happy hours. So you're talking like a hundred thousand dollar happy hour. They just <laughs> they just put together. So, I mean, this this works. This works for sure. And it doesn't have to be just for osteoarthritis. Obviously, you get a good hook there, but it could be for anything. Um, so I hope that's some good food for thought. And thank, and thank you for letting me dominate the entire conversation here, Viv. <laughs> I just grunted appropriate times. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. Great, great points there. Thanks. You can jump into